Our company generates millions of dollars a year in profit with a sales team of only three people. And that's largely in part due to how efficient our sales team run. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can set up your sales team to do the same. Let's start with defining some terms. How do we know what is a good sales team? Most people define a good sales team based off of closing percentage. How many deals they close a month versus how many calls they got on. The issue with this is it doesn't actually show the real efficiency of the sales team. For example, if you have a sales team that closes at 50%, but on every single time they close, they're only collecting 10% out of the 100% contract value, then although it would seem that you had a great sales team, in reality, they're not that efficient. Because if you could collect 30, 40, 50% of the contract value upfront, then they'd be making more dollar per booked call, and there would be less stress on your fulfillments. And that brings me to the metric that we look at and we help our clients look at, which is dollar per booked call. So this is essentially how much money your sales team makes a month divided by the amount of slots booked on the sales team's calendar, because that's really your limitation when it comes to a sales team. How much availability do they have? So when you're looking at the efficiency of a sales team, you should see based on the amount of availability they have, how much money are we making? And that's that's how we end up a dollar per booked call. And it, the higher the dollar per booked call we have, then the more efficient the sales team is. The lower the dollar per book call, the less efficient the sales team is. And this is how we get away with only having three salespeople in a multi-million dollar company where most of our competitors or other people I see out there have six, 10, even 15 salespeople for the same amount of take-home money. The simplest and easy way to increase your dollar per book call is to keep Keep your salespeople selling. You would be shocked at how many sales teams we work with where we identify that the number one activity that the salesperson does every single day has nothing to do with selling. Most of the time, it's trying to figure out where the leads are or what they should be doing that day, or it's doing silly admin work or trying to organize the CRM. Ironically enough, this takes up the majority of the salesperson's time, and yet it makes them the least amount of money. Instead, you should flip it on its head and you should have the salesperson spending the majority of their time selling, trying to make money for the company, and the minority of their time doing the admin work. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't have any admin work done inside your sales team. We're actually an incredibly data-driven company that only relies off of the input that our salespeople give us through the admin work. But what I'm gonna be talking about in this video is how to optimize that admin work so that way that you're not doing anything unnecessarily and leaning more on software and systems to do the majority of the heavy lifting versus the salespeople doing it in their free time. Here are a few examples of how we keep our salespeople selling. Number one, we have somebody other than the salesperson pre-qualify and vet the calls on the salesperson's calendar. So instead of the salesperson getting on the call and trying to discern whether this person's worth their time or not and spending the majority of the time in pain discovery mode, every single call that the salesperson gets on, they know that they've already been through a pretty rigorous vetting process to see it's even worth them pitching them in the first place. So although you may get, let's say 10 book calls a day, in reality, probably only five of them are actually qualified to receive your products or services. And if you're having your salesperson have to qualify and make that decision whether those five people are qualified or not qualified on the call or in their time, then they're not really selling, are they? They're kind of pre-qualifying a little bit. So what we like to do is segment that part out of the sales process by hiring somebody such as a sales coordinator to review the applications and book calls that we have come in every single day, cancel the ones that don't make a good fit, and then set up and remind the ones that are a good fit that they have a sales call and to be prepared. The second thing that we do to keep our salespeople selling is we minimize the amount of admin work. In reality, your salespeople should be doing the absolute minimum required for your team or your leaders to know what their KPIs are and who they've closed. So the ways that we do that is we create a very standardized eight question form that our sales 
people fill out after they close a deal. We call it a deals closed activity. And this asks very standard questions such as what are the support expectations? What was the revenue? What was the cash? What was the problems that the client had? What are they looking forward to? What's their biggest bottleneck? That way we can make the transition between sales and client success as smooth as possible. But by standardizing this form, we can make it so that the salesperson, as soon as they close a the deal, they can fill this form out in four minutes and know that everything else is going to be taken care of for that new client. So they can essentially fill that form out and move forward to the next call or their next activity without having to worry about anything else regarding that client, which is huge for the mind capacity and the energy of your salespeople. The third way that we keep our salespeople selling is by letting the CRM do the heavy work. I would say that the majority of the clients that we work with are using their CRMs to 10 to 15% of their true capacity. Yet they're hopping around from CRM to CRM thinking that this next CRM over here somehow has some magic that the original CRM didn't. If the majority of people would just use their CRM to 70 to 80% of the capacity that you should be using it at, your business would probably double, triple, or even quadruple without any more work on anyone's end. One of the ways that we like to have our CRM do the heavy lifting for us is through smart views. And almost every CRM has some kind of version of this. But what this is, is it's essentially lists of people inside of the CRM, custom save lists that your salespeople can click on and that they can follow up or go through that list of people based on where they are in the pipeline and when the last touch point was. So instead of them trying to track who they should be following up with and where they are in the pipeline and what stage they're at and who's the hottest lead, Lead, this smart view or this list is dynamically updated every single day. It says, hey, here's your hot list of people who have gotten on a demo with you but have not closed in the last seven days or they're communicating back and forth and they have a deposit down. Those people should be the first person that your salespeople reaches out to when they have free time or when they're doing follow-up versus the person that they haven't even gotten on a call with and they know showed six months ago. So by having these smart lists dynamically uh, update without the salesperson or really anybody having to do anything, we optimize the salesperson's time so that when they're not selling, when they're doing follow-up, which could be argued as selling, it's as optimized as possible. And the final way that you can increase the efficiency of your sales team, how you can keep your salespeople selling, how you can increase your dollar per book call is by using a standardized sales pitch. In truth, I've been against this for the majority of our business's history. However, recently I've realized that just like everything else inside of our company, if we can standardize and systemize, if that's a word, our sales process, then we can remove the variance that happens between closer to closer or even in the same closer in a week to week basis. So you might have one salesperson who has a $1,000 per book call. You have another person who has a $500 per book call. Then you have a one person who has a $300 book call one week and then a $900 book call the next week. And that kind of variance makes it very difficult to scale, especially if you're re relying on paid advertising to acquire clients. So by standardizing the sales process through the use of some kind of pitch deck, what happens is you decrease that variance by having the salesperson make sure they hit on every call all of the benefits and all of the value that your product or service offers, while still allowing the salesperson to have the creativity that they need in the small but important parts of the call to close the deal. For example, if the salesperson has wasted all of their energy trying to think of what do they say during the entire pitch because they're recalling the sales script from hearts, then by the time they get to the objection handling part, they may be too tired to actually close the deal versus if they follow a very structured and scripted sales process through a pitch deck, then it leaves them the ability to have the creativity and energy for when somebody asks them a question during the call in the pain discovery phase, or even in the objection phase at the end of the call to be able to handle those with ease and close the deal.